Hey up everyone. Well today we have something very special. And bear in mind because it is the first time I've done an interview like this. Mason Klein made a big impression on the bike community this year with his battle to get to Dakar and I wanted to get to know the real Mason Klein more. I asked him was graciously given time for an interview with him. It took us a while to organise it, but after his recent trip to Brazil, we finally managed to fit it in. I will say now that this was before Jean Chouet's resignation, so there is no comment about that. I'm also introducing two other fantastic YouTube channels that I have begun to work with too. You will hear from them later, and we will be doing some projects together at some points. There are a couple of short sections where the audio is terrible, and we were working with the telephone recording in a barn across the Atlantic, and then Mason's phone died at the end too, so we had a relocation. I hope you enjoy it, and it gives you better insight into Mason Klein and his future endeavours. Try not to forget to like the video and leave a comment if you enjoy it, and do go take a look at the Rally with Mason channel and show him some of the support he deserves. I will link it in the description below. I will be doing more with Mason as time progresses, and if you have any questions you'd like answered, do leave them in the comments. Anyway, enough chatter. I'm going to go straight into the interview. First, I'd like to say a big thank you um, for trying to get the Dakar footage noticed. It did mean a lot that you shared it into your fans elsewhere. But just introduce yourself a bit, if you would. Um, what, what, who is Mason Klein, and what makes you tick? Yeah, uh, my name is Mason Klein. I'm 22 years old. And for sure, the thing that makes me tick is uh, just wanting to see new things. Uh, I really like the idea of riding till I run out of gas, filling up and going again. Uh, I really could just go all day. And uh, the thing I look forward to every year is obviously the car because that's the best opportunity you can get, right? Uh, two weeks straight of riding till you're out of gas, filling up, going again sometimes filling up again and then going you know so yeah it's really something uh super special that uh it's you know you gotta wait all year to do it there's obviously other small rallies but uh for me dakar is like number one goal right dakar is like it's the highest level of racing um actually this last year i did a rally not part of the world rally series uh, it was the Saratoga rally and I got to do, I got to experience something really different. Um, so I'm like real navigation, seven days of racing, all new people. Like it was a really good experience for me. And, where was, where was that? Sorry. Yeah, that was in Brazil. And, um, I was fortunate enough to have a nice bike there and be able to not only finish, but win my first rally. So that was pretty amazing for me because now I have the opportunity to go back and ride for Honda Brazil which is you know it's obviously super super uh what's the word you know doesn't doesn't happen to many people and I'm really grateful to be in the position right now my first time on a an official team like with real support and now I get to just work on training and looking forward to all the races every month um it should be really awesome for me because now I get to really work on my navigation this year and um, hopefully also improve my riding skills. Try to catch up to the guys like Toby Price. Uh, you know, I, I always say I need to learn how to ride. Um, for sure I know how to ride, I just, I need to learn how to ride like these guys, you know, and um, I think racing in Brazil will really help me. Well, congratulations on the win anyway, obviously on the new ride. It must take a lot of pressure off knowing that everything is there in place and you can just concentrate on the riding and training. Yeah, for sure. Uh, it's a completely different different feeling um, being able to just go race and train. But of course, there's always the pressure of how am I going to get back to Dakar next year? It's still something that's super unknown. Uh, nobody knows, not even myself, what's actually coming next. Uh, for sure, there's talks with multiple teams, but, you know, nothing is written down, and I'm still really not sure what I'll do. Where did it start? What was your first rally, Mason? Uh, my first rally was the Sonora Rally in Mexico. Rally wasn't, hasn't always been about racing, and it kind of still isn't about racing. I did the Sonora Rally in 
I think 2020 with the, I mean, the reasoning for wanting to go for me was to see something new, you know, travel the world. And uh, this was my start was in Mexico, a uh, rally put on by Darren Skilton. Um, stage one, I think uh, I didn't finish stage one, actually. Um, I ended up getting like 30th at this rally uh, due to a mechanical problem. I learned a lot about, uh, you know, test the bike before you race it, right? I think that's something super important. Uh, something I haven't almost never got to do this last year. Um, so usually always some crazy little problem, but, um, for sure I learned a lot from this first rally. Uh, riding in Mexico is actually really crazy because I ended up getting like a giant cactus thorn, like straight through my knuckle. Like, I don't know how big over an inch. Um, I got like a giant rock to my eye. My eye was like swollen shut. Um, so you came back yeah. looking like you'd been in a UFC fight. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna get like totally shot by this uh, cattle rancher guy um, yelling at me. He was saying close the gate in Spanish, right? I I'm learning Spanish, Portuguese, French, all these languages now. And um, obviously I was a little slow at the time, right? <laughs> and uh, I, my friends on my phone, I was like, this guy's yelling at me. Can you try to listen on the phone and see what he's saying? And yeah, what a crazy experience. I sat by a river for I don't know two hours and event like I eventually got going again in this stage but they due to being out there for so long they said I gotta call it a day but yeah Sonora Rally it was definitely one of the best rallies I've done as far as navigation training and terrain like I enjoy seeing things not just flat roads you know like I don't know it doesn't matter how flat the road is as long as there's a view right yeah. and uh as long as there's some navigation to do, it, it can make any road interesting. And yeah, that's why I really like Brazil now, I guess, is because there's a new animal or bug or bird, or whatever, around every corner. It's been so crazy. Uh, the best way to describe it is it's like you're riding in a zoo. Uh, really, the, uh, the one of the last I, days I was in Brazil, some monkeys jumped up on a window and I'm like in the middle of a city. Like, this is crazy. I think you pretty much answered the next one of my questions there which was what was it that got you hooked and helped you decide that this was where you wanted to go what is the bike that you're riding in rally with mason now and how did you end up riding that bike what's the uh, story yeah so obviously after certos um it definitely gave me some more options and uh i you know when i had no other options I called the Honda Brazil team and basically begged for a ride. And now uh, I'll flip the camera because you can show the you can show the bike right in the video. Yeah. So it's a 2024 450RX. It's a five gear bike. It's more like enduro racing in Brazil. I think it's a. Uh, I'm not sure if it's 11 or 13 liters in the back with the IMS tank in the front. Just like super light enduro bike we have here. I'm basically just building it, right? Um, it's got a lot of stuff, doing a lot of work, making some fancy parts. But this is the bike basically that I'm racing. Um, yeah, five gears is interesting for sure. It's been just a lot of prep work just so I could start training, right? It, it looks like you're handy with the spanners anyway, so I'm sure that's all part of the fun in some ways. Sure, it's fun, for yeah. sure. Talk to different people in the subscribers group. Is there anything other than following your channel that viewers can do to help Mason Klein in the ongoing quest to win the Dakar? Uh, well, besides subscribing and following, obviously watching the videos is pretty good. My, uh, my videos aren't the best, I guess, like as far as like, is what's i don't know the word but people don't watch all the way through right like they usually click off then for a couple seconds that's like my bad um i'm trying to figure out ways to not have to ask all my friends for money every time for sure that's yeah. part of it that's the only way it works right but you know i don't know it's i'm not sure how i want to try to continue racing like 
as far as getting the funds to get to the race, you know. Talking about how you do things in the future, again, um, there are bound to be changes of direction at different points um, to make that final goal possible. Where is the best place to stay in touch with you? Um, via the YouTube channel, Instagram, or on um, the various Facebook groups that you t you're involved with? Yeah, for sure. Uh, one of the things that I post the most frequently on is my Instagram. Um, I'm, I try really hard with the, the YouTube, but sometimes I like, I, I don't even know if I posted my Dakar stuff yet. That's like a good question, right? Uh, you haven't. I'll, I'll tell you that. I'll tell you the answer that you haven't. I would love to see some of it as well. We, we try to record a lot, but obviously most of the time, this time my dad was actually working on the bike, right? And, um, so for sure the, the quality content was not as high. We didn't expect to have to rebuild the bike like from the ground up every day. So um, obviously, and the internet this year, the first few stages was terrible. Like, it was really hard for me to get like Instagram posts out because obviously I'd be riding most of the time or asleep. I'd be up all night still coming in. And um, obviously I really, I was trying really hard to get stuff out, but it was just not possible. My dad, I don't think he probably did like three or four days straight no sleep he's probably pretty happy when i was finally out of the race then we just got to watch the race that was nice um going along to the end supporting my friend the indian rider harith noah riding with tvs shirko he killed it super proud of him it was a was fantastic ride ross branch was far from happy shall we say and felt like he was delayed i think it was the second to last stage the big one now i know you went racing then do you know <laughs> who it was that delayed ross branch i will understand if you don't want to answer <laughs> no i i don't really know what happened but i would say i would be pretty happy if i was wrong ross because you know considering he was one of the few riders to get like I don't know, I think he got 40 minutes back on stage one. He won the first stage by over 10 minutes. Uh, pretty impressive. So if anything happened, I'm sure it was pretty evened out. Yeah. I would be really proud to be Ross too. And, um, you know, the year before Ross, I think was the only rider that actually waited for me for my big crashes. So you can never be mad at somebody for waiting with other riders to make sure they're okay, right? No. Um, no. Well, he was there for me. But I don't know. I think it's a, uh, it's not, it's not something to complain about, right? Like everything is a racing incident. Incident, you know. You just got to be, you got to be happy you made it to the finish, right? Yeah, I mean, he must have been proud at the end. It was a fantastic race. I think for me, the two riders that were the big standouts were Ross Branch and Harith Noah. Yeah, for sure. Like, super unexpected results from both of them. The first week uh, with Noah, I, I talk to him every day. He's one of my training partners in the U.S., like, comes from India. We train together, do road books, work out, all this stuff. And um, I always try to teach him, like, you know, make your own lines. Get Don't follow people. Read your road book. And um, I could tell, like, it was kind of stress, right? Because I don't think he's finished in the last three years, maybe. Like, not even one race. And now, suddenly, he's, like, the only Sherco rider with the bike that isn't broken. He's killing it. And uh, he definitely found some confidence in the second half of the race. Talking to him throughout the rally, he didn't want to know how the results were. And um, it was... I was being really mean. I was, like, letting him know, you know, if you didn't get lost by, like, one minute, you would have won the stage, man. Like, and he has no idea if I'm joking or not, but at one point he was set to win the stage. I think he got lost like right at the end. And I was so disappointed he got a, what did he get, fourth? I was like, you should have won the stage, you know? And just watching from the outside, like, I'm understanding how my dad feels maybe, besides the worried about getting getting hurt, you know? No, it's not gonna get hurt. He, he's crazy, right? I have to say, I've been putting together a bit of profile on um, Aaron Noah, and the more I learn about him, the more fascinated I get. I can't imagine what he's like to be a training partner. Seeing you two in the gym together. <laughs> he's the, I think he's 
basically the fittest Red Bull Motorsports athlete out there. And when he comes here for a month or two, I can tell you the last thing I want to do is work out after he leaves. Like for him, it's for him. He's slowing down to work out with my brother and I, right? And for me, it's like I don't know, a thousand percent too much. Like three, four hour road bike rides. Then you got to ride your dirt bike. Then you got to go back in the gym, like just for months. And he does it all year long. And I do like two months of that max, average one month. Like he comes like every other month, right? And then I just like you know slow down, do like hour on the road bike in the house i go to do gym stuff but not like when he's gone i would say i focus more on strength and when he's here we focus a lot on endurance and it's definitely a really good program and he know, definitely knows how to be in shape he gets to ride in the rocks right and dakar a race like dakar is a race where a lot of americans do really well because I mean, the terrain in Saudi is kind of the same everywhere, right? But um, Americans choose to ride the rocks, right? And a lot of other guys, they come from motocross, so it's just different. Just like Noah comes from a motocross background, so it's new. I get to learn how he trains, and he gets to learn how we train, and for sure we both improved a lot because of it. And that's what it's all about, learning, isn't it? I mean, we touched on core racing earlier, but could you explain a little bit about how your family fit in. That is, again, it's something that I think came across while we were covering the Dakar, that it really is a family concern. Yeah, so uh, CORE is the same, at, you know, it's short for Klein Off-Road Racing. Um, my whole family basically races, even my girlfriend, she has more AMA number one plates than me in America, right? So um, everyone around me has done a lot of racing. Um, and at a high level, right? Yeah. Um, I think it's really good that we're really close because, you know, growing up, it's always just been my brother, my dad, and my mom. Like, we do all the work ourselves. You don't pay someone else to do it. Um, we all know how to do every work or fix anything on the bike, right? And um, when you start talking about, like, being on a team, it is definitely makes you kind of nervous, right? Because... Now you have to trust somebody else to touch your bike. Normally yeah. it's like, do it, or I don't do it, or my brother doesn't do it. Like, who knows if they did it right, right? Like, bringing my dad to a race like Dakar is really good for me because I know that if I have a problem and I say something, he's gonna make sure it's fixed. And with other people, it's more like, you know, there's always the risk of, uh, I don't know, maybe we can fix it, I don't know. My dad, it's like, no, we'll change the part because, you know, we already spent a hundred grand to get here and we're going to make sure the bike is new every day, right? And the things like this are really important for, like, the confidence of me, right? I think the men is really important. And when you leave out every morning worried if your fuel pump's going to go out or, you know, things like these, it's it really makes it hard to go the right way and read your road book, right? So um, this year I was under, I had almost zero stress, no matter what the problems were. I was never mad, I was never upset. I was just like, this is how it is. And I know that people working on my bike did everything they could. And in the end, it was normally some electrical problem, like with the computer or the bike, a wire broke or yeah, in the end, finally the crank bearing went out because the bike was just revved so far to the moon through the dunes, like, you know, it was, it was nothing anyone could have fixed, actually, besides, you know, a little bit more time before getting to the car. I have to say, I did say when I, when I did the very first of the Dakar videos this year, that I thought you were very brave to push the engine as far as it had been pushed. <laughs> yeah. Going on, many of the viewers will, I'm sure, have seen the Rally with Mason channel. Who gets to ride on the Rally with Mason channel with you? Uh, well, I do, okay, normally it's like if I remember to record, and if I don't remember to record starting at the beginning of the day, then I just like don't do anything all day, right? Um, a lot of it is normally just my training with other people because obviously when I'm training by myself, or not by myself, but like a normal training day is normally not pull over and get your phone out, but for sure, um, 
we do switch like opening like navigators like maybe every 30 kilometers someone else opens we do like back and forth stuff so i will get a video of someone riding by yeah but my youtube channel is normally like fun like this is how i train at you know more uh, understandable pace i hope like i just try to show what goes into actually training it is the same as training i just you know try to show it off more when i'm actually with other people and with the people that you ride with uh for sure everybody's allowed to ride with me um but it's more often like uh friends you know um i have this thing on my website it's like a ride day right there's 500 bucks to get to ride with me but i mean everybody's invited right i think the main difference is like when i offer road books to people for training it's the real question is do you want to do road books or do you want to learn how to do road books yeah give me is no problem right like i don't mind sharing but when you spend a whole day trying to teach somebody how to do it the right way uh for sure that's time consuming right and those are also the things that i try to post like i try to share and teach people the way i do it but um i think a lot of people they just want to go fast like my brother is a perfect example um for sure he can navigate i think anybody can navigate if they just slow down but that's something that needs to be taught like if you're already a top level racer like you know one of the best in the country right um and you have to slow down i think it's really hard for people so uh, coming from me i think it's kind of crazy because you know i'm really well known for not knowing how to slow down like <laughs> my my brain or my talking or like you know in general i need to slow down and um yeah for some reason i just understand how to slow down i guess um <laughs> that's it's kind of funny day, actually um i'd never thought about it that way you think about racing it's all about going fast but obviously going faster and missing all the waypoints is no use for anybody in a rally yeah, for sure. Uh, something we like to say is you can be fast, but if you're going the wrong way, it doesn't matter how fast you are, you know, like going fast the wrong way doesn't really help, does it? No. <laughs> what is your favorite bike? What's the favorite bike you've ever ridden and why? And I change the word favorite carefully. Um, it might not be the best bike. It could just be the one that you like gelled with gotta be honest i don't remember riding too many bikes in my life right obviously i've only ridden ktm since this year um so it's been pretty it's it's gonna be between the ktm brand obviously because that's all i really know uh the 500 has been a pretty um like reliable bike for sure one that can do everything from extreme enduro to you know dual sport like for sure i'd definitely recommend that bike rides for rally training right so it's it's a bike that'll go forever in my opinion and again i touched on it earlier it's like do you realize how much of an impact you had on people who wouldn't normally necessarily follow the dakar this year no for sure uh obviously i didn't it hasn't been like an internet thing this year like i don't even think i watched the the dakar recaps on tv yet like I don't know. This year has been pretty, pretty fast pace. Like it's from Dakar straight to the next thing, right? Yeah. It's been hard, hard to know what's going on. Well, I can tell you certainly from the feedback that I've had on my channel, there are people that used to follow the Dakar, um, haven't for years and have been drawn back in by the Mason Klein story. My audience dropped dramatically at the point where you dropped out of the rally. <laughs> For sure, I've heard I've heard people say this before too. Like, a lot of people have actually told me they stopped watching after I had the problem. Um, so, yeah, it's been pretty crazy. Yeah. Why do you think it is that your story resonates so much with normal bikers? Well, I don't think anybody has like these. Nobody's trying as hard as me. For sure, nobody's trying as hard as me because you know it doesn't matter. It's not even like. I'm trying so hard to win the, a stage, right? It's like, I'm trying so hard to get to the start of the stage. And then I have to try so hard to finish the stage. And then as soon as I get home, I'm trying so hard just to figure out how I'm going to come back the next year. Like, 
I feel like there's always something crazy happening that is definitely easy to pick up for the media. Like, for example, I'm at the start. It's the night before the prologue, and my bike hasn't showed up. It must have been a challenge. (laughs) Yeah. I get to the start of the prologue, and I realize I might not finish the prologue. I didn't really put that much gas in my bike because I don't know how much gas this bike uses compared to the that I've ridden. So I probably won't finish the prologue. After all this, uh, well, I'm probably out right now in the prologue. So anyways, it was fun. That's a bummer. It's pretty gnarly being me. <laughs> at least at the car. I mean, for sure, I have it really good, right? Like. You know, obviously everybody wants to be in the position to be able to go to the car, especially me, right? But um, I don't know. For sure, I'm all in, and so does my family. Like, we put everything we have into go and race. It would be nice to maybe do something about family in future. If you're up for that, you've talked to your partner and your brother. Can we get them all on camera at some point and uh, do a, a client family focus? Yeah, for sure. It'd be definitely interesting. Uh, I think my family definitely deserves more recognition. Um, yeah. Actually, uh, this the 2023 Dakar, we did some filming for a movie called Lay Dakar. It's uh, by a French producer. I think you could look it up right now. It's yeah. not out yet. I think it'll be out in October. There's like supposedly four main characters, and I think I'm the opening, so pretty excited for that it's yeah like, that'll my, be interesting i'm really excited to finally see it come out because it's like the story of dakar and what happened last year so i i want to see it and i was there right and for sure when that comes out that'll be cool for everybody to watch for sure yeah. people will under- obviously under- keep us posted let us know when it's out and uh, we can um, we can all have a look. We've seen you ride in endless trails. Do you ride on the roads much? Uh, at home or in the race? At home. Uh, well, I can tell you, when I'm done riding, I'm normally done, right? Like, I ride dirt bikes for the fun, right? Not... I'm definitely a kid, right? Like, I could be lazy sometimes. <laughs> sometimes the option is 10 minutes on the highway, or... 30 minutes in the mountains and I'm just like yeah let's go home yeah. you know so those are for sure the times where I choose to go home but uh it's definitely not fun for me I just do it to get it over with uh for me the fun is being in the trails and I do a lot more single track and like whoop tracks than I do um you know open desert and flat roads now I've watched some of your training videos and it does look an awesome place to ride I mean, you've talked about a few people, but in your ideal world, if you were given a three-rider team, who yeah. would you choose as your teammates? For sure, I'd go me, my brother, and Noah, because Noah would make sure that my brother and I know how to ride, and uh, not like how to ride, but like, you know, we'd be able to ride because we'd be in shape. My brother would teach both of us how to ride, and the three of us would probably get the overall podium because, you know, would be. I feel like if you actually work as a team and you actually read your road book, it's probably easy to win the car. Because, you know, I don't think a lot of people do that stuff. I don't think they read the road book. It's not true, right? I'm just, <laughs> I don't know. I think I think if you have a team and people you trust, it's a lot easier to. I don't know. The race just becomes easier. I would assume. I I've never had this before. But um, Um, the small experience I do have trying to work with other riders during the rally has definitely made it easier. So there's some people you have out there that you trust for sure and make the rally much more enjoyable. You had the chance to do it and money was no object. What would your ultimate adventure be on a motorcycle? Uh, Well, I definitely (laughs) have done thing like three times now. So I don't think the location for me is like the important part for me maybe like the ultimate adventure if money was no option and the bike didn't matter like we're not talking about the bike it's definitely would be like uh how many days can you go like i don't know i want to go far you know and sometimes i feel like maybe the car isn't enough 
Actually, I found myself at the end of some of the world rallies. Like, instead of going to the finish line at the end of the liaison, like, I go back in the dunes. I keep riding. I'm like, no way it's over. You know? <laughs> like, after everything, it's usually never enough. Like, you always want more. So, um, I don't really know what is enough or how much is enough, you know? But for sure, my goal in life would be to find out how much is too much. For sure. They just yep. need to make two more weeks longer and then I, I think we'll figure it out. <laughs> so, what tips could you give to a complete beginner when starting to ride off-road? Well, I would definitely say do it because you want to do it, not because your parents tell you to do it. I mean, if your parents tell you to do it, it's probably because they know that dirt bikes are cool, right? But uh, if you ever feel like you're being pressured to do it, you know, that's definitely not the way. Um, for sure, there's a lot of kids that get burnt out early. And um, I really think rallies, the idea of not having to race, you know, is nice. But, but the idea of racing every weekend and having an excuse to be on your dirt bike is also nice. Um, for sure, everything you can do to keep it fun. Um, definitely motorcycle riding or racing becomes very stressful when it's like, I guess this is the first time it's ever been my job, right, is this year. But um, these last few years, everything I did, all the stress of like trying to find money, it's really stressful trying to figure out how you're gonna raise so much money yeah. in so little time. Um, but in the end, if you're doing it for something like that you actually want to do, it's definitely worth it. And I know, um, obviously, you have to be careful with some things that you say sometimes, but given the choice, what would your next Dakar bike be? Mm, well, right now, I'm pretty sure Honda is like the number one bike out there, I guess. Uh, of course, I don't mind doing it like on some bike that doesn't exist and never existed before. I don't. But I think at the top of the list would be to try it on a Honda, right? Um, yeah. I think it's been proven it's one of the best bikes there. And I already ride one in America now, so I don't think it could hurt to ask for that. I mean, going back to this year, many of the Kobe interviews did look very staged. Now, to a certain extent, I'd say that is to be expected. And there are obviously language barriers. But how big of an impact do you think that Kove could have on the market? Uh, for sure, if Cove kept going at the rate they were going, um, they will be really big. Um, the thing about the stage interviews is really funny, and I see how it could seem really fake. But uh, all my answers to questions are like, the first time I rode the bike, everything was always genuine. Like, it's just they're always they always have the camera out, right? Yeah, and you're not can't say anything without it being on video like the the team manager of the french team like came over i thought he was just trying to be nice you know shake my hand they had some like i didn't even know there was like a guy taking pictures like hiding and they posted it and i'm like dude so for sure it's i mean they they're recording with a purpose right but nothing that i said was like Nobody told me to say anything. I just want to make that really clear. Like I wasn't insinuating that at all. Like that if that if that's how it came across, it was just it's interest. Is the CEO as genuine as he comes across? Uh from what I've been heard from what I heard through translations for sure he's super cool. Um He definitely has some crazy ideas. Like the on the bike that I raced, uh, the sprocket. I mean, I'm sure it exists in other bikes, right? But I've never seen it on a race bike where the cush hub is connected to the sprocket. Like a lot of a lot of little things that just make a lot of sense, right? I mean, if you're a race team, as a as a normal consumer, right? You don't want to replace a whole cush drive hub with your sprocket, or just because you need a sprocket, right? Like all the little things. For sure, he has the right idea to build a good bike. It's just. Yeah. The execution everything takes time and there's just not enough time right well he's taken a lot on as well with the world super sport team as well isn't he yeah for sure yeah um it's just interesting to, obviously you've met him in person and so you get a different view to how we see things from the outside 
Yeah, for sure. He's super genuine and um, being around everybody was really nice and the enthusiasm they had, like, you know, when the bike would turn on one morning. Okay, so I went to bed, you know, they put a new motor in. My dad had to, like, make me go to bed because I was like, well, I want to see what you guys do because just in case something breaks, I want to know why it broke because I'll probably know why it broke if I watch you work on the bike. And, you know, I woke up the next morning. The bike still wasn't running to the same problem. If I would have stayed up all night, I would have got out of the desert a lot faster the next day. I just need to make that clear, right? Because they did this thing and they tried to explain to me what the problem was that made the motor break that that day. But they were like a little tired, you know? Hadn't slept in like three days at that point. Um, anyways, when the bike did wake up or turn on like 30 minutes before my start time and I was all finished with all my gear on and the bike still hasn't ran in a day. When it turned on, you should have hear, heard him like, he was like, you you would have thought someone got hit by a truck. He was just screaming like he was so excited. I was, it was crazy. Um, <laughs> he definitely <laughs> likes dirt bikes, which is cool. Yeah, yeah. Again, I first sort of did a video on them. It's well over a year now. And it was one of the things that um, drew me to him that it was somebody that loved bikes that was behind the company yeah for sure it's important if you don't mind we have a question from a key from dad biker dude channel on youtube pakistan hey jason so over here we're seeing a lot of folks moving from heavy traditional adventure motorcycles to let's say rally or dual sport motorcycles somebody coming from your side like you know from an enduro or rally background what is something that you think that those guys should keep in mind when they're riding or beginning let's say an enduro or a rally motorcycle uh i so i see a lot of people like they want a big they have these big bikes like 700 800 1090s even and they're like but i kind of want to go on the dirt right but also i like to do like a lot of road um, something really interesting is like the Cove or the KTM or whatever rally bike you can buy. Um, we go on the, we're on the bike for 10 hours a day sometimes. And we have, I mean, the front tire is like a motocross tire and the back tire is obviously not a full road tire, but you know, close to it. Uh, people are always worried about like their tires, you know, I think it's kind of crazy. Um. I think it's definitely better to ride a bike that's better for the dirt than for the road, you know? If you're worried about, like, switching, you know? Don't be <laughs> so worried about... I think most bikes can go down the road. I think it's something super important. Like, when I recommend someone to buy a bike, I say, well, buy the bike that can go in the dirt that has suspension, because when you get sick of riding on the road, you can just go in the dirt and actually have fun. Um, I have many memories of an old DR600, which was an awful bike in so many ways. You could like rag it through the woods and then like tear down the tarmac and it never complained about anything like, except starting. It always complained about starting. Yeah. I had a yeah. permanent bruise on the kickstart foot. Yeah. Something that can thing. Most bikes can go down the road, right? And People that are trying to get into the off-road scene, you know, it doesn't matter what you get as long as it has some suspension and some not road tires. Like you can have fun riding in a new trail. What do you think? What kind of? Because it takes a lot of uh, physical and mental toll on your body. So, what kind of a training somebody should go through when they're riding in the Euro trail? Well, something that's really important is like not getting angry, right? Like if you have anger issues definitely not like a good sport for you because um you know when you make one mistake and you start getting frustrated and you're like with in the heat of the moment you know worried about racing definitely can get to your head pretty quick even if you're like normally a calm guy so definitely the mental side is really important uh, i almost feel like fitness okay you have to know how to ride a bike right but fitness is like not even that big of an important part of going for 10 hours a day on a dirt bike. I think it's kind of strange, but it's really not about your fitness. You know, it's more about like using the road book.
I think yeah. that's pretty crazy, really. So most people wouldn't not, wouldn't know that. Like they'd be like really worried about you know long days on a bicycle or. For sure, it makes a difference, right? At the highest level, everything matters a lot. But most people could get away with learning how to do a road book over going to the gym. Well, interesting advice. Maybe not the answer that I would have expected. And uh, I'm sure a kick um, will appreciate your answers. It's one of the channels that I've connected with. Another one, Dave from Bullpound Cycle said, um, personally, he wants to learn how to be a better rider without crashing because he's over 60 now, he doesn't need to crash anymore. So I'd like to ask Mason how us older, perhaps less experienced off-highway riders can get to be more experienced, get to be better riders without risking our bodies crashing, basically. Uh, are there special exercises, uh, drills, uh, places to go, anything like that um, that would be geared towards the average or slightly less than average riders well uh, I think to get better at riding it's definitely not about going fast because um, I think the, the basics of riding are definitely more important than holding a wide open right like going fast doesn't mean you're a good rider in my opinion not crashing means you're a good rider and if you can ride without falling it's pretty good like you know being able to do slow turns like hard turns or i think being able to ride really slow actually it makes the biggest difference when i'm training most of the time it's not about i never go full speed like it's never about that it's always just like hit the turn perfect do everything like Try to be perfect right it's impossible to be perfect so there's always something to work on and almost never does being perfect require you to go wide open because you know it's pretty hard to be perfect when you're holding it wide open down a road and in all the bumps and rocks and for sure speed is not the key to getting better it's about patience and taking it easy secondly if you notice all these bikes are storied bikes. It's Gary Nixon's bike, Malcolm Forbes' bike, the crazy ice cream man from Hell's bike, or they're just, the bikes themselves are storied. So what I wanna hear is, I'd like to hear some stories from Mason. For me personally, like the, the reason why I race um, I got to enjoy a lot of crazy, crazy moments, like coming in really late at night. And one of the nights I slept in a bus, I slept sitting on a plastic chair by a fire, just freezing to death because my tent was zip tied closed. My tools were on my bike and we weren't allowed to get to our bike anymore because it was in park for me. <laughs> Basically just all these crazy things racing at night like with the trucks trying to not get run over because the bike's overheating so i had to keep stopping keep stopping like you know it's pitch black out so no one's gonna see you until the last second all these crazy things that happen i got to do a, a motor I, I checked the piston and the rings you know mid-stage when i couldn't get it to start one of the days um i was like well i'm not gonna quit you know if, if it's seized i'm gonna unseize it so i was ready to do whatever i could to keep going you know for sure one of the most memorable parts was not just not knowing if my bike was going to make it to the start line because everybody knew about that but when the bike did finally show up um and we got going i got a nice prologue one of my actually the best prologue i've ever gotten at any car so like that was really good then stage one everybody knows got third right stage go basically struggling to get it to the end, having to watch the oil levels really closely. Uh, talking to locals, I actually got some two-stroke oil at one point, like for the pre-mix, for the fuel. And I think I put like 400 cc's of pre-mix oil in the motor. <laughs> the engine uh, from a, like a family, this guy and his kids, like walk around the desert in their underwear. I was like, wouldn't happen to have some oil. 
that is one of the things that um well that made that connection with a lot of the people that um, do watch my channel um, certainly and I'm sure elsewhere the fact that you did fight and carry on fighting to the last bitter end let's have a few quick fire questions to finish off if that's all right who is the hardest rider you've raced against uh, uh, my brother because yeah. by him and you have to come home and know that you got beat by him it's pretty hard <laughs> family rivalry yeah <laughs> who is the rider that you enjoy racing alongside the most i don't know because you know the only racing i've done in the past few years is rally and normally you ride with someone new every day yeah uh, for sure riding with scott the last few years was pretty nice it's someone like you expect you understand how they're gonna ride you have you know like their style it's pretty nice to like get used to someone i guess riding alongside someone like that so the person i had the most experience with is probably skyler we've talked about what's happened in brazil what are your plans for racing in 2024 my plan is to hope that i can keep racing in 2025 while racing in 2024. Uh, i definitely want to be able to win some more races and uh the competition in brazil is really awesome because they're all really good riders but they're really good navigators too so it's a uh, it's not an easy series and it, i've never done any of these races before i haven't been to these areas before it's going to be all new so yeah i'm lots excited of lots of exploring i'm excited for the struggle we talked about your hopes and dreams and obviously I think Dakar is well and truly pinned at the top of the board, isn't it? But uh, yeah. what would a perfect day be for Mason Klein? I would like to say not having to work on my bike, but also I kind of like working on my bike. So if I could just work on, if I could ride all day, right, come into the shop, not have a problem while riding, and then come into the shop and then work on the bike, but not be tired. That'd be perfect, right? Like. I get tired, doesn't matter what I did during the day, like right now is my bedtime, you know, so I'm ready for bed. If I didn't have that part, if I could just go forever, that'd be the perfect day, like a never ending day, that'd be perfect. Good answer. Time is always the most valuable thing that any of us have. Finally, what is worst, mud, sand or shale? Uh, for me, sand for sure. Um, it's something I don't have so much experience in. I say it all the time. I don't like the sand. I do like it. It's fun because it's the most challenging for me. But when it comes to racing and, uh, you know, that the whole week or two weeks worth of effort, uh, you know, comes down to that sand stage, definitely makes you kind of frustrated. Makes you wish it was just a rock stage, you know, something that, uh, something you prefer a little bit more. So uphill or downhill, which is more challenging? Uh, for sure, uphill can be really challenging. I, I, I'd say I don't really mind downhills. I don't mind letting the bike go. I try not to let it go, right? And I really try not to let the bike go. But for sure, uphills can be challenging. Probably the most challenging for me. My leading brother on the chasing. Hand, <laughs> leading or chasing? Uh, I like to lead, of course. Uh, I like to be the leader, for sure. What's worse, crashes or breakdowns? Uh, probably crashes because it's like to not finish a race because you got hurt is always like pretty fresh it just doesn't feel right you know like it's not that you did everything you could to finish even if you did I'd rather I'd rather finish in the back than crash for sure that is about it really I mean is there anything else that you'd like to say we'd like to say a big thank you to you for keeping us entertained Thank you for having me on. I'm really sorry for uh, not being able to do the call sooner. Thank you um, from me and all the viewers for taking the time to sit and chat with us. I hope you come and join us again. It's been informative. Some answers, not necessarily the ones that I would have expected. We all learn something every day. I do look forward to hearing more from you in the future. Um, I'll be watching the rally with Mason channel and we can go from there. Hopefully we can get a few more people watching you. Yeah, I hope so. Thank you. Thank yep. you for your time. Oh, thank you for yours. Perfect. 
Have a it's good day. It's been lovely to meet you, Mason. Thanks again for your time. See you. Well, I hope you enjoyed that open and honest look into the life of the real Mason Klein, and I will leave you with some footage to watch. I do look forward to hearing your comments as always, and it does help with the YouTube algorithm, so let me know your thoughts. Thanks for watching, and thanks as always for all the support and donations. I have left the link in the description below. As I've said before, please don't use the YouTube giving button, as they take most of it, so there's much better ways to support the channel. Why not take a look around the website? You get the best biker t-shirts in the shop, and we do plenty of custom work too. There are even more printed products on the Red Bubble shop. This is where I proof the new designs. There are mugs, hats, wall art, sweatshirts, phone cases and more. Over 60 products with great quality printing, delivered worldwide. Basically, if you can print on it, I can usually supply it somehow. Just drop me a line via the contact page on the website. I try and put promo codes in the community page for discounts when I can so it's always worth checking in case there's a big discount on. The blog also has loads of articles about all sorts, from maintenance tricks to stories from ride outs, track bays and other adventures. There is other content on there, and I'm looking at reposting all the original 2024 Dakar videos YouTube pulled, so we will have all the footage back online soon. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel if you got this far. Join the best motorcycle community on YouTube and be the first to see any new videos. Let me know if you would like more videos like this too. I know it's a debosh from my usual videos, but it was an opportunity to see the real person behind what was a heroic effort in the Dakar this year. Remember, keep your spanners close and your keys even closer. Ride free everyone! <laughs>